uh, liberal values. Another Labour MP described him as a divisive xenophobe. The leader of the Labour Party, though, adopted a slightly more nuanced approach. He said that his victory was a global wake-up call. It was a reaction against the establishment. But he said the answers offered by Mr Trump were not the right solutions. A result that's very surprising to everybody after a very nasty and divisive campaign that um, President-elect Trump has run. He now got to, he's now got to try and bring people together and unite the whole country. I hope he's prepared to do that, but there are very big issues that he faces. And uh, there is a message also that many people in the United States felt very left behind by their economic system. And that's a message uh, indeed for the whole world. His solutions are not a solution to them, but the message is a strong one. One of, one of the striking things, I think, about President Trump's victory is, unlike in... ...previous elections, really, Politicians at Westminster simply don't have the ties, the contact with the president's team, let alone the president. They are dealing with a man who they know very little of. And certainly I suspect the hope in Downing Street is that President Trump proves a much more conciliatory, conventional politician in the White House than he proved on the campaign trail. Norman, thanks so much for that. Well, as news broke overnight that a Trump presidency appeared more likely, global markets fell sharply, with the US dollar plummeting and gold prices surging. In London, the 100 share index was down more than 1% on opening, but has now made up that ground. Our economics correspondent, Andy Verity, has all the details for us. It was in Asia, as the election outcome unfolded, that the market shock was strongest. Shares dropped by 5%, and on the foreign exchange markets, money flowed out of dollars and into yen. But later in London, market Armageddon was averted, with shares down just half a percent and the pound down against the euro, but up against the dollar. Some of the more uh, wild movements that we saw first thing have, have stabilised, and I think we've seen quite a logical and, and rational response, actually, from, from broader financial markets today. It's Donald Trump's economic policy that worries markets most. He's pledged to cut taxes for those at the top and bottom of the income scale. But he's also said he wants new tariffs, taxes to make imports to the US more expensive and slow them down. And he wants to renegotiate trade deals, which he says have failed to protect US workers. How would a Trump presidency affect our economy? One word, trade. We sell the Americans everything from posh cars to crude oil to gas turbines, 40 billion pounds worth. They're our biggest single export destination. If Mr. Trump protects American workers in his trade negotiations, that's likely to mean slower growth in exports, and that in turn will mean our economy grows more slowly. The new president-elect has already tried to reassure the US's anxious trading partners. We have a great economic plan. We will double our growth and have the strongest economy anywhere in the world. At the same time, we will get along with all other nations willing to get along with us. But concerns remain that Mr Trump's policies could hobble economic growth across the world. If Trump does go ahead with a very protectionist stance from the United States with respect to all of its different trading partners, the major ones at least, what we are going to see is potentially some reduction in global GDP as trade volumes decline and therefore as it becomes harder to do business across borders. Donald Trump's election promises are expensive. Tax cuts for corporations as well as individuals at an estimated cost of $4 trillion, nearly twice the value of the UK's whole economy. Promising is one thing, implementing another. Andy Verity, BBC News. I her slack because it was, what, maybe two or three in the morning when, before Donald Trump came out. So I think you have to be human and say that is a crushing blow this defeat coming out of nowhere for her and you want to collect yourself and it's the middle of the night so if you do want to talk to your supporters at least wait until it's daylight had all of that in her mind today as well I think it's the humiliation not whether or not she's going to be locked up or whether or not Donald Trump goes through and is pledged to on day one appoint that special prosecutor this has been a humiliating defeat to be beaten by, of all people, Donald Trump, 
in a campaign where you are the most qualified person on paper with your resume in the United States, that that's what's a stronger word than embarrassing. And her team were quietly confident. That was what we were all hearing beforehand. No one thought that uh, Donald Trump could win and win this strong. It n never was seen by anyone. No one predicted it. Every pollster had it wrong. Every political reporter did not report definitively that they saw the forces that were going to create a big win for Donald Trump. We have a lot of introspection to do in our business. But going back to your question about Hillary business, uh, Clinton, uh, I think right now this is the end of her public career at least for now. And so I think you have to be a human being and say she didn't want to come at three, come out at three in the morning to make a speech. Why not? She did, and this is important, she phoned Donald Trump and conceded, and that's what was important. And when he had that call, he went out and made his